What's up everybody and today we're doing another update of the Ukraine Russia situation. I changed the background because it was all sci-fi-esque and I feel like that was very inappropriate for something um, actually quite tragic and quite frustrating. Um, but obviously I want to be covering this as much as possible and I want to kind of update myself. Like I'm doing these videos not just for you guys but also to update myself. Um, the best website I've seen so far is uh, the BBC has kind of like a summary constantly rolling in a live update of everything and I kind of like their format whether you agree with you know different types of news outlets or whatever I, I don't really care but what I do care about is getting some good news and then also talking about said news and giving you my opinion on what the crack is and what's going on. Um, since the last update I did a couple days ago Things have changed drastically, right? We've we've seen what looks like a kind of a slowdown from Russia and Ukraine really kind of doing well for themselves. We're hearing about um, the ghosts of Kiev, which is kind of like this guy who has shot down like six or seven Russian pilots, which is absolutely nuts and such an incredible story. And I'm seeing so many amazing and, and really heartwarming videos online of soldiers really kind of just knuckling down and, and, and defending their country being very patriotic it's very beautiful to see um before we get started though question of the day comes from taffy says question how long do you think the ukraine and russia stuff will go on for i honestly don't know the way i've been kind of looking at it is the next month is going to be the big decider right um we're either going to go in the extreme of a war or we're going to de-escalate and um my guess is if it carries on the way it's going russia are really going to be struggling and they're going to have nothing else to lose, right? So they might just go all in, which makes me really worry. So I don't really know how it's going to go, um, but I do think it's going to be scary. I think it's, the next month is going to kind of decide everything. So uh, I'll, keep being, I'll keep making these updates if you guys, you know feel like you're getting enough information about it um, i will make the, make these updates if you think i'm missing anything or if you think there's any better sources out there leave them in the comment section down below and i certainly will take a look at that also if you have questions for me in general anyway leave them in the comment section down below um, but for now let's pop let's pop this up real quick let's talk about this summary like we did last time we'll go over this summary and then we'll go over some other stuff that i've seen online and uh, what i've been told by friends who are out there uh, yeah and we'll go over that so kiev mayor Kiev's mayor imposes a curfew from Saturday evening until Monday morning. Uh, we've seen that they've, they've done martial law anyway, and they've put some curfews out there already. So uh, that's no, not really like any surprising news. What we do find surprising is the fact that Kiev has really been... Obviously, it's the center of everything. It's, 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 it's a very important strategic point for Russia to try and catch. But they've really knuckled down and done well for themselves. So I'm very, very proud of the Ukrainians really banding together and looking after each other. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see. Um, he says, anyone seen in the streets will be considered Russian sabotage. So basically, any anyone in the streets past that curfew is breaking the law. And therefore, they must be on Russia's side. I get it. Uh, but they've also got to be careful on that. Not to do any friendly fire for unnecessarily things. Because what happens if something goes wrong and someone has to leave the house? Right? We need, They need to be very careful of that. Which I'm sure they are doing. I'm sure they've got a lot of... Um, eyes in the sky and, and eyes about figuring out what's going on the ukraine capital is braced for another night of attack after russian forces failed to break through overnight on friday again russia's been struggling they've really been struggling which is nice to see they've been really like they, they, it's as if like it was a big momentum and then all of a sudden they've been halted i've seen videos of um I, I, you might have seen this video this brilliant video online of a russian tank pulled over because they asked that run out of gas and uh this ukrainian is just driving past in his car he pulls up and he's like hey guys if you need a lift back to russia let me know you're all surrendering anyway so you might as well surrender and they're all laughing and they just drive off <laughs> what a legend <laughs> just trolling freaking russian soldiers and then cracking on unbelievable all right, next one here. Huge numbers of people are fleeing Ukraine with a 27-hour-long queue of women and children um, on the Moldovan border. That That's really sad to see, a 27-hour queue, especially if it's women and children. I've got children, a 3-year-old and a 1-year-old, and I know how difficult it can be to look after them, never mind in circumstances that they're going through. I really, really hope we send a bunch more people over there just to help these situations of getting the people to safety, looking after and making sure they've got shelter, food, water, all the necessary things they need and all the extra things they need for children as well. I hope they can get that squared away as soon as possible and we can help them out as much with that because that is... Um, it's, it's a real struggle. I do know... I did see something online. I'd have to find it where um, the US has is, is given 
uh, a few hundred million dollars worth of supplies and they're expected to do some more in the next couple days I'll, I'll i'll have a look into that and see if i can find any more out about that moves to shut russia out of the swift global bank payment system gain ground after germany softens its stance so we're going to slowly see more what's gonna this is my thought right this is my thought we've everyone kind of made their statement every country in europe and u.s made their statement about the sanctions they're gonna do right or at least they said certain sanctions and they all kind of didn't really say yay or nay to the swift global banking payments and what's happened is i think france were the first ones to come out and say we might do it and because they're saying they might do it everyone else is like all right we might do it now as well and there's definitely going to be like a rollover on that uh, we're also seeing a lot of um russian people just you know russian millionaires and billionaires really struggling outside of the city as well outside of their country like um the chelsea owner the chelsea football club owner has had to give away some of his um kind of um control of the chelsea football club to um a, 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 an organization within the chelsea football club. And i don't really know the ins and outs but we've seen stuff like that happen which is really important to see as well um germany also announces it's sending anti-tank missiles and other weapons to ukraine making a major change in policy so this is important right we obviously ukraine isn't part of nato so sending troops in is not really a, an option right now but what they can do is send weapons and supplies and we're seeing the us do that we're seeing germany do that and i'm hoping we see a lot more of that especially like obviously we can send weapons we can send all that other stuff which is really important but again there's women and children and even older people who are trying to flee the country who need the supplies they need the manpower to kind of process all these people and get them into safer countries and into safe spots where you know they can they can bunker down they can get some sleep they can get some food and they can also get updates of what's going on with family members who are fighting in ukraine these are all very important situations that need to be addressed and i hope that they're taking care of that just as much as they are sending weapons because they've got to think of that stuff as well the uk meanwhile says it it and 25 other nations will send more weapons and aid to ukraine so there you go uh, more weapons and again aid which is very very important to ukraine so i'm, I'm glad that they're doing that i'm glad they're really pushing for the extra kind of um humanitarian aid as well which is important because there's there's women and children there's there's people who just want to get out of the country who want to survive who want to live their lives right and they're 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 very important they're just as important as protecting the country so if in fact they are the country right the people are the country so um yeah as long as they can protect be protected that's important so let's look at some of these live updates um kiev takes cover and waits we kind of already know that hunkering down for the Kiev curfew that will last till Monday morning while authorities hunt down sabotage and reconnaissance groups. A whole city of 3 million people takes cover and waits good night. Let's hope they've got food. Let's hope they've got supply. Oh, 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 oh. Let's hope they've got food and, and, and everything to, and supplies to kind of get through their uh, the nights. It's a long time to wait till Monday to be stuck in a house. So let's hope they're all prepared for that and they are well equipped for it because not only... Well, they might need to protect themselves, uh, but they need food and water to survive. So that's really important as well. And let's hope that they can keep stuff up like um, communications and stuff like that, which Russia have been trying to sabotage, sabotage so that they can get up updates like this on Twitter. We know Twitter has been, been run down on in, in Russia. They've, they've cancelled it in Russia. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff as well. Like there was a big thing about Pornhub and, and a bunch of other websites that are really kind of trolling you, uh, Russia because of this whole situation. So uh, it's good to see that a lot of people are uniting against russia for this at the end of the day russia are backing themselves in the corner and again this can go one or two ways they can be like okay we've done wrong which i very much doubt russia are going to do or they can just be like a rat in a corner and they're just going to be like all right we're going to go full nuke and everything because we've got nothing to lose now and that's even more scary um i'm staying to fight for my future you have residents we've seen a lot of this i've seen a lot of young people staying in the city taking care of it and hoping to to fight which is really really cool um Spending her time fighting Russian disinformation, very important. You know, this is 2022. Like, it's not back when World War II happened. Communication and news is incredibly important. I'm trying to give my most unbiased opinion as possible. Um, but you are seeing some propaganda out there. There was a big thing about Russia putting out propaganda that people from Ukraine can't go to Poland as a refugee. That turned out to be fake. Um, so there's a lot of misinformation. And they're really trying to, to kind of like sift through that and and uh reporting disinformation is very very important to keep comms up and to keep um the ukraine people not understanding what's going on um air raid sirens start in kiev oh jeez let's 
That's a scary, scary sound to hear. Man tries to stop Tank with his bare hands. Oh my god. Uh, should we watch it? Let's have, Let's have a watch of this. Hey, he did it! He stops it! I'm not gonna watch any of that because I don't want to. If he gets from Nova or something like that, I don't want it on the channel right now because that's some sensitive stuff. If you are sensitive to this type of thing and it does, you know, upset you if you've been in times of war or anything like that, then obviously some of these videos might upset you. So I do apologize. I know what PTSD can do to some people. So just be careful when you're looking at some of these scenes, especially if you go online on Twitter. If you have got PTSD, any veterans out there, shout out to you beautiful people. If you have got any worries about stuff like that, be careful because there are videos that will upset you, okay, online, and just be aware. It's war, right? It's war. You're going to see it, so just be very careful. France will also help Ukraine with more weapons. Yep, we saw this over in the summary. Beautiful to see. Um, let's have a look here. Um, Netherlands confirms new military support to Ukraine. Interesting. The shipment includes two, 200 Stinger missiles, um, anti-tank weapons and missiles. Nice to see. Um, you can't send people in because they're not part of NATO, but we can certainly give them things to help. I'm horrified by the invasion, Russian protests. So we've seen a lot of protests in Russia again, and they're getting shut down, which is really frustrating to see. All right, situation on the ground. Let's look at this right here. This is quite a lengthy thing like here. This is this is what I want to see. I like looking at these maps and kind of figuring out what's going on. So let me zoom in here real quick so you can see this map a little bit bigger. Um, so presidential office right here. I'm not sure if that's where the um, Ukraine president is staying. Prime Minister? Is it Prime Minister or President for the Ukraine? I'm not sure. Anyway, we know that he's around this area, I'm pretty sure. Um, and he's staying in the country. What a fantastic guy. He's turned around and said, I am staying with the people, not fleeing. Even though he's been granted asylum in many different countries, he's decided to stay with his people. What a legend. So, this red area is under Russian control, which is a big area. Look at this. We've got an airport and everything. We've got explosions around here. Obviously, there's an explosion and an apartment building here. They're probably going to try and look for this airport here as right now as well. Um, so, yeah. Obviously, up there with the Crimea. It's not... <laughs> you've taken quite a bit, which is heartbreaking. Russian forces have regained control of Hostomol Airport to the west of Kiev, which was attacked by airborne troops. Russian forces arrived in the Obolan districts of Kiev on Friday, less than six miles from the city center. There were attacks on the city capital early Saturday, but the Ukrainian government remains in control and has imposed a curfew until Monday morning. The curfew will definitely help kind of uh, whittle down some rats, definitely. Um, how much of Ukraine does Russia control? You've seen this map before but with a little bit less red. They are starting to gain a little bit more momentum. Look, look here in the north. They've definitely come through Belarus right here, and they've really been pushing to get Kiev. They take Kiev. They can really divide this country, and what you will see... Um, I wish I had a bigger marker here. Um, but what you would see is where this river goes kind of right down all the way here. All this side will be red. If they take Kiev, all this side will turn red. And it'll be a fight from the uh, the west and the east. That's what will happen, unfortunately. And they'll probably start pushing up from the top and the north of each side. And, and probably try and do the same thing. Where they, you know, if you, if you can corner off a big section, it stops logistics and all sorts of stuff getting in. Russia is now full control of significant parts of Ukraine territory. Troops are spreading out in parts of the north, east, and south with missile strikes and artillery clearing the way for advancing Russian forces. Very scary again. Very, very scary. Um, countries close to airspace to Russian... Wait. Countries close airspace to Russian flights. We've heard a lot about this. This is good because look at all the countries around Ukraine. This is important. Uh, yeah, we've got the UK, obviously. But look at all the countries around UK Ukraine that are stopping flights. This is important because it's going to stop people, you know, special personnel, they, which would go on civvy flights if they had to and, and pick up weapons in other countries, getting around the country and going in from the other side and sabotaging stuff. We've heard about... Um, I heard a thing about Russian special forces going in to try and take um, important personnel in Ukraine, going in by themselves to do it. So they're going to be very careful of that as well. We might see some of that updates on here. More countries have closed their airspace to Russian players. Estonia, Latvia, Slova Slovenia, um, Slovenia, sorry, Romania today all said they would make such a move. Yeah, that's going to increase, I think, as well as we go on. Um, 
on the ground, long queues of people willing to fight. Look at these beautiful people, just like me and you, saying, you know what? We're not going to let them take our country. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. I've seen a video of like an 80-year-old rocking up in the queue and be like, let's go. Let's go. Which, jeez, absolutely nuts. Uh, Trust draws up new Russian um, sanctions hit list. Uh, UK Foreign um, Secretary has drawn up a new hit list of Russian oligarch. Ol oligarch. I've got dyslexia, guys. I'm sorry. To be sanctioned, the Sunday Times reports. Um, super rich links with Vladimir Putin. Yeah, we kind of already know this. We've seen this with people like the owner of Chelsea Football Club. Um, so, yeah. Africans fleeing Ukraine reports uh, discrimination at the border. Oh, great. That's the last thing we need to worry about right now is discrimination on top of all this. Um, let's have a look here. Reason behind... Blah, blah, blah. Millions of Bitcoin pouring into Ukraine from anonymous donors. Interesting. It, the, it's funny to see how different this type of invasion and potential war, as in like World War Three. we know it's a war, but like a giant global war. It's interesting to see the differences in, in the... In the way that um, people are being attacked, it's not straight head on like gun versus gun. It's more like cyber attacks and and uh, restrictions and all these other things that you know they're trying to do to avoid unnecessary conflicts, which is nice to see. But the the uh, the crypto space, the internet, and all these hacking. We've seen anonymous say that they're going to uh, start start going against Russia. In fact, they actually didn't. They just they just took some part of database from. Um, the Russian Ministry of Defense or something, which is, again, really important. That's information that's really important. I never believed Russia would invade until they did. Yep. That's usually the way it goes. Yeah, so we, we, we're kind of just going over the, the same stuff here, and we're getting later in the day. As of recording this, just so people know, it's Saturday the 26th at 4.46. That's the exact time right now. 16.46 in military time if you need that. Uh, but that is the update so far. You know, you're seeing things online. You're seeing footage. You're seeing some really drastic things. You're hearing stories of, of heroic people like this ghost of Kiev and all this stuff. Um, just be resilient. Just be just be slow. We know this is going to take some time to kind of resolve. There's some really dire things on the internet. So again, if you are a former military veteran and you got PTSD, please slow down on watching some of these videos and kind of be um, aware of what you might see. You know what you're going to see. If you're a veteran and you got PTSD, you know what you're going to see when watching these videos. And in, in my opinion, in my opinion, it's important to see some of these videos because it shows how drastic the situation is over there in Eastern Europe. And um, it, it's really sad. It's really, really sad and heartbreaking. From videos of, um, I saw a lady pointing out a dying mother, which was heartbreaking to um, a guy, an old guy in a car, and a, a Russian tank just runs it over. Luckily, the guy survived. There's some really drastic things, so uh, be careful when you're looking at these videos, but at the same time, be aware of what they are and understand the depth of what's going on in Ukraine, guys, okay? Because it is really heartbreaking and really difficult to watch, but important to watch, okay? If you've got updates, let me know in the comment section down below. I always record these the day before, so obviously updates are always rolling in. They're always rolling in, guys, and we're going to be trying to cover it as much as possible and trying to give out information because there, I know in the comment section there are people from Ukraine who watch these videos as well. So, guys, if you're out there in Ukraine right now or in, in surrounding countries and you're scared, the, world is, the world's heart is with you. We are with you. We hope you're okay. We're, we're trying, like, the countries are trying their hardest to send supplies. And let's just hope things go smoothly, okay? And stay strong. Um, you know, take one day at a time and all that good stuff. Make sure your friends and family are safe. Make sure you kiss them every night. Tell them that you love them and so on. All right? Other than that, members, scrolling across the screen, thank you for being awesome. I love you. Um... I'm going to put a chat in the Discord. We've, we've been speaking about Ukraine in the Discord. Um, so if you do want to know about that, it's the officers and the guardsmen they can put into a private Discord. We have a good old chat about that. Because obviously this is a sensitive subject and it's something that the military community, which is a massive part of my community, um, is very interested in talking about and, and wants live updates because we have a lot of active members of the military in our community as well. So other than that, 
I love you all. Links in all my stuff down below. If you want to get a hold of me, Twitter, Instagram is the best way to do it. If you do have sources and things that you think I've missed, let me know by the comment section, by tweeting it to me or anything like that. And I'll get that in the next video in the next update. This is all about spreading good information and helping people understand what's going on in Ukraine and Russia because it may get worse, which is a horrible thing that I thought I'd never say, but it may get worse. So the more we can spread good information, the more we can help people, the more we can... Uh, hopefully make the situation a little bit easier for some people okay so um stay safe stay safe everyone i love you and i'll see you in the next video goodbye